Okay, it was looking at the police station. Yeah, Doc. okay. Mark! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Great Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Forgot I had that on um uh had it on mute. Um yeah, let's go back in time. It's uh simple enough, I think. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. And you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, <laughs> Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Uh... I guess I can break you out of jail. I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered <laughs> drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, I've been acting with this guy, isn't it? Jesus fucking Christ. Drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great. I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Uh... Yeah, what about the space-time continuum? Cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. All right, so we need to head to the uh, the soup kitchen, I believe he said. God, Marty runs really fucking stupid. <laughs> All right, so actually really simple, just over here. It says his phone close by. Seems to mean inside. And of course, there's a McFly in here. There always is. McFly? Biff? Kid? Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas <laughs> landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? 
Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh... Now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Okay, so we just met another Biff and... Uh, McFly of the past. Where it was, I just... Oh, there was a telephone. Didn't even recognize that as a telephone. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Ooh, may I say his calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Okay, I guess I need to... Head back to the courthouse. I've actually no longer got the, um... I haven't got the, uh, the guide up anymore. I'm actually doing this again blind, so... Uh, the courthouse, I believe, is just over here, but I may want to talk to... Doc again. First, I'm not sure, actually. We'll try the courthouse. I really hate fucking... Things like that. I, I don't like having a camera like this. It's a pain in the ass. those these are very sensitive legal documents nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court papa i mean judge brown says so judge brown doc uh nice to meet you i'm michael uh corleone emmett brown but i am a law clerk not a doctor now please get out of my way i have important business to transact Okay, so we've at least found young Doc Brown. Oh, I pressed the wrong thing. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. And the gravitational constant is variable. Why, is that even possible? Oh, let's... Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. Uh... Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. The I am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, well, uh... It doesn't really seem to be working. Maybe we try going back to older doc, see if that works. Oh, fucking, I hate this control scheme. It's not very good. I know it's meant more for mouse and keyboard, but fuck it. If I can play with controller, I'm playing controller. Psst, Doc. Good morning. Have you found my younger self yet? Found your notebook. 
Well, I met your younger self. Great. And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks he's been sent by my father to check up on me. What do I do to convince Team Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be... Muttering. I, I, I never mutter unless, uh... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Yes, the Expo! How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No, it was a miserable failure. <laughs> But it was a spectacularly <laughs> miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something when the universe is something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. I still can't figure out what your younger self is muttering about. Blast! If only I could hear him myself. All right, so I've obviously got to do something myself. Later. Okay, but don't forget, we're on a bit of a deadline here. So obviously I need to... It's probably going to be something like I've got to get a piece of paper and write it down or something. His mutterings, I'm not sure. Whoops, I don't need to do that. Um, do I have anything in my inventory? Oh, the tape recorder, of course. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Come on, Doc. Uh, damn it. Uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. I don't think I can just back out here. It's not giving me the option. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. God damn it. It's your future I'm looking out for. In more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! <laughs> this isn't going very well, but I think it's because I may have fucked something up there. It's, I don't think it's staying in the event. I've got to get that to work on him as soon as he comes out. Well, no. Will you just give me a chance? 
Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. I didn't press a fucking thing. And uh, about your Don't say it. Their A multiplied by the Don't think, Emmett, think. There we H go. To the A multiplied by the inverse of A H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A I O. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we at least got that. I'm gonna be stopping soon because I, I I only done an hour just to see if this picks up and records fine. I don't know for certain. We'll uh, see when I uh, check out the video. But we will uh, at least give this back to uh, Doc Brown, and hopefully he can solve the equation because I certainly fucking can't. Doc, Marty, how goes the escape plan? So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Multiply by the inverse of A, H to the A, multiply by the inverse of A, I Good know. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Good. Uh... We don't really need Not to talk about anything. choice of words, Marty. I, I didn't say anything. I think I remember what it was. So we'll uh, go give this back to young Emmett. There he is. Just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome. I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Ah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. Whoa! Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. Besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to where you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. I got a subpoena my grandpa? <gasps> It's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Which I believe is cement, I think. Anyway, uh...
that is going to be the end of the session, guys. As I said, this is basically... I'm obviously going to carry on with this at some point. But I just basically wanted to test the game, make sure the recording comes out fine. Hopefully, it has come out fine. And I apologize I've not been talking too much. Obviously, the game is very heavily story-driven. It is a Telltale game, after all. And I don't really want to ruin the story and stuff. Um, so, thank you very much for watching, people. And I will see you next time. But until then, sayonara.